This P Diddy story that obviously features Meek Mill has been doing the rounds on my so end of social media, and I'm sure most of you all guys' ends of social media also. And am I the only person that can't really figure out why this is a big deal? I always assumed Diddy was a party boy, and being a party boy is doing some party boy shit. And what I've heard about Diddy so far is that he's into some party boy shit. That's what party boys do. If you have the means that he has, if you have the money that he has, if you have the fucking access that he has, the connections that he has, right? The charisma that he has, the history that he has, of course you're going to do the stuff that he does. Because why else wouldn't you? That's what real rock star people do. The only weird thing about it is that he's still doing it now at his, you know, advanced age. He hasn't really slowed down, right? He hasn't really kind of taken his foot off the pedal. He hasn't decided to settle down and have a family or get married. He hasn't, decided, he hasn't decided to kind of hang up his social kind of cape and all that malarkey. He's still very much in the field. Well, before the allegations came out, he was still very much in the field. He was still very much outside. But I think everything I've heard so far about Diddy just sounds like regular party boy shit. But I reckon part of the reason why this is such a big deal is what it is revealed is that hip hop or maybe African American people, not even hip hop, African American people are intrinsically homophobic. Like if there's one thing African American guys or men, no people, men or women don't like, it's homosexual people. They fucking hate it. Um, to the point where Diddy was accused of raping Cassie, right? He was accused of raping Cassie, sexually harassing, um, you know, um, to the point of, you know, drugging, all this sort of crazy shit in that lawsuit. And no real men in hip hop really made a stink about it. They were all kind of weirdly quiet. The moment Diddy comes out and he's been accused of maybe having sexual relations with Usher and 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 Meek Mill allegedly, suddenly um, all the fucking guy black Twitter and hip hop spaces kind of explode and they're like going crazy because intrinsically hip hop, I guess, is you know I've never really noticed it before, but I guess it is incredibly misogynistic, incredibly homophobic, and they just don't stand with it in the slightest. So it probably annoys these guys more. It probably gets under their skin more that Diddy might be allegedly gay than it does that he rapes a woman. That's not really something that they give a fuck about. They kind of like, oh, it happens, isn't it? Whatever. She probably asks for it. Oh, it's Cassie. They're together. She's probably lying. But when it comes to the the him maybe hooking up with dudes, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like, come on, man. Come on. What do you expect him to be doing? It's fucking P. Diddy. Like, what do you expect? But anyway, let's read the article here. P. Diddy's ex-producer alleges the rapper had a sex with Meek Mill and other celebrities in the Grammy Awards Traffic and Drugs. Rapper Sean Diddy Combs um, is immersed in a new legal battle as his former producer accused him of, pr of pr pressuring him sorry, and Meek Mill and others and artists to have gay sex with him in exchange for the Grammy nominations and awards. Um, Rodney Jones, who also goes by Little Rod, on Monday filed a 70-page lawsuit for the F Federal D District Court in Manhattan against Combs detailing the allegations of sexual assault, drug dealing, hiring sex workers, participation in various sexual activities, all of which he was forced to endure while living with combs um to work on his album that there's a bit in the story where he says he had to like make beats in the toilet while combs was while sean what did he sorry was in the shower that that's some real party boy shit right <laughs> he's probably doing bumps in the shower somehow right he's got like he's got like a fucking waterproof spoon right he's, he's, he's got waterproof pills <laughs> <laughs> he's got waterproof mdma he's doing all these drugs in the toilet and this guy has to sit in the toilet while diddy is like stark naked behind some frosted glass right probably slapping his dick against the glass while he's fucking showering being like oh sorry excuse me can you imagine can you imagine um little rod claimed that he to have produced nine of the tracks in diddy's latest the love album of the grid and it also paid a pittance of twenty one thousand, despite living in diddy's house for almost 13 months it took to work on the album he got paid 21 grand to work for 13 months on an album that was nominated for a Grammy. <laughs> I'd be pissed. He came Diddy on several occasions, groped his anus. That's a, how can you grope someone's anus? You can only finger their anus, can't you? Because your anus is inside. How can someone grope it? They have to kind of like dig their hands in, though. Can you grope an anus? You can grope someone's bum. You can grope a breast. 
Can you grope someone's anus? You have to kind of, that's like more of a shove of the finger. Fucking hell. He groped his anus and crotch without consent and even exploited his administration. No, and even exploited his admiration of Stevie J, whom he idolized, looked up to, to force him engage in homosexual acts. Would you, I don't think I could ever be forced into sucking someone's dick if I didn't want to, just because somebody I look up to told me to do it. I'm not going to lie. I think he was probably looking for any encouragement to do it anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't think somebody that I look up to could just say, hey, someone that you like did it, you should do it too. And I just do it. It's it's not likely, you know? It's not likely. But again, I could be wrong. Um, Lil Rod said that he was showed a video of Stevie J having sex with a Caucasian male without a condom. Oh, that's a big deal, right? It's not that he's having sex with a Caucasian male and you're getting shown this picture. The big deal is that he did it bareback. Honestly, these articles are fucking crazy. <laughs> Without a condom. Woo. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Why is he showing this guy this video in the first place? Anyway, um, and was told by Diddy, this is normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. He attached a screenshot taken of the video to a lawsuit. So according to Twitter, according to gay Twitter, which I'm a part of, right? I, I follow a lot of people on there because I want to be knowledgeable and aware of what's going on, on on the gay side of Twitter. And I want to be a part of the jokes and the memes and those guys just have more fun over there. According to gay Twitter, that screenshot that looks like it might be featuring Stevie J and some white dude isn't Stevie J. It allegedly is some like famous scene um, of some guy that's, you know, fucking a dude obviously in the porn scene, but it's not Stevie J. It clearly isn't. If you see, actually see the video, the guy looks something like Stevie J. But of course, if you like zoom out and it's blurry, it might look like him, but it's not. Um, because I saw, I saw the video myself because people were linking it on Twitter the other day. So it's not actually Stevie J. But I don't think that means he's lying. It could still be Diddy thinking of Stevie J. And it could still be that Diddy had the video on his phone anyway. So it doesn't mean that guy lied. It just means the video he was shown, it wasn't actually Stevie J on the video. That's what I re reckon. But the funny thing is, this post obviously is the one that everyone's kind of occurring to, right? In the actual lawsuit, which I've got here on the screen. The thing that was sending people crazy was the admission on this part here that alluded to maybe Meek Mill being involved with Diddy. I think it's number 71. And it says, Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with a rapper, Five, redacted, and an R&B singer, redacted, and Stevie J. So if you scroll down here and you'll see that Five, he's a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. So who, who else could that be apart from Meek Mill? And then you got number six here. He performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency. So that's obviously going to be Usher. So that's where everybody's coming from when it comes to the whole, you know, um, Meek Mill and Usher allegedly being involved with him. My personal thing is this, is that as much as I like Diddy as a musician, as much as I love him as a, as a cultural figure, um, I remember there used to be this one interview that I was obsessed with Diddy. I think it was on BET where he kind of was talking about being a black man, right? He was talking about, oh, I love my black skin. I love my, like, it was just, I don't know, there's some videos I remember watching of his on loop because he had this kind of really cool, inspiring, motivational message about, you know, being the best version of yourself. He had this whole history of him coming up in the music industry, being an intern and then, you know, launching Bad Boy Records and the whole Biggie thing, like just incredible soul, like musical legacy and whatnot, right? Especially with these albums as well and further down the line, like Last Train to Paris. Like I still listen to that from time to time. Like it's like an absolutely, you know, one of the best albums of all time. But one thing that I've always been a little bit perturbed by when it comes to Diddy was how he's spoken about by other people in the industry people speak about him when it comes to business really badly and it kind of leaves a sour taste in your mouth when you hear how he treats people and this is one of the examples this is courtesy of the joe Biden podcast and it features um what you call it the the producer formerly known as young berg now known as Hitmaker, talking about the issues he had with diddy and why he never really messed with him too much and i think for me yes the um the stuff he did with cassie is abhorrent um disgusting you know we can obviously know that that's flipping not on at all and he's lucky he's diddy because if he wasn't he'd probably be in prison for that and if he's accused it, the stuff he's been accused of in this lawsuit with this little rod guy is also disgusting but for me the thing that really is the worst part of his personality i think personally is how he treats people in the, in the music industry especially his fellow black artists he doesn't really you know 
he doesn't really suffer fools gladly. Um, no, even suffer, suffer fools gladly is not the right term. He doesn't give anybody any grace. He scams people. Um, you know, he lies, he cheats, he does everything to kind of get the leg over, even though he's one of the biggest people out there. He's a billionaire, all this sort of shit. So this is the stuff to me that I think is the worst thing above all the other stuff that he does, which I think is more so like a party boy persona thing that's probably been empowered and enabled by people in the industry itself. I think this is the stuff that people should be calling out mostly, the stuff that he does to people and up and coming artists and messes with their money and shit. Let me play the, the video for you now. I, uh, Puff hit me. He like, yo, I'm doing an R&B album. I need you. You know, you the guy. You know, it's going to be London on the track. You and me. And I think that we should do everything together. Blah, blah, blah. Say less. Send me some joints. I sent him a 10 clip. It's crazy shit. I think that one was in it. A bunch of stuff or whatever. And he was like, he hit me back like, man, it feel like, like I want, I want that. I want that Berg shit. I'm like, stop trying to be me. Like, it sound like you trying to do what I do. Like, niggas send me some yeah, different nigga. shit. Da, 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 da. Get off my dick. So I didn't send him nothing, right? I was mm -hmm. like, fuck it. Next thing I know, the nigga reached out. He had, they deciphered my records and reached out to everybody that I collaborated with and dissected me from the situation. So he's calling Cardiac to his house like, you, you need to be one of the hitmen. And this, that, and third. Yeah. Next thing I look up, Eric Billinger is in the Bahamas with motherfucking Puff, and they singing songs together. I'm like, when the fuck? I'm like, Eric Billinger done lived in the fucking LA his whole life. Now he with Puff and his shit. Now See what I mean? That's the stuff that I think makes Diddy look the worst. Asks for Hitmaker for help, doesn't get the help he wants, then goes around his back and starts to pick apart the guys he worked with to reconstruct the stuff that he did with himself. So he can get around with not working with him and get around with not paying him. That's sort of like scumbag shit that he's been doing for years, decades. No one's called it out. Joe Budden's sitting there as well, not saying a word. He knows exactly how much of a scumbag that guy is, but refuses to say anything, refuses to criticize because what? He wants to remain in the guy's good graces. Like, it's finished, man. Diddy's finished. Next thing I know, I'm executive producing Fritch Montana album. Why this all happening? The nigga had an album, the intro of the album, my tag was on it. He took my tag out of it, screamed at the intro, did all the shit or whatever. And I was like, damn, this nigga is really diabolical. Like, mm -hmm. so I wasn't fucking with him. And then um, ja, I'm in Mondrian. They still like working on the album in Miami. And then he signed, ultimately, Jazzy was also on those demos. So I don't know if he knew Jazzy before, but it was also very surprising to me that now Jazzy is with Puff and this, that, Wait, 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 wait. Jazzy was on some of those demos? Yes. Jazzy's fire, too. Jazzy's yes, fire. Jazzy's a super talented. Absolutely. So, yeah, she's yeah. amazing. Miss you, Jazzy. We love you. Yeah, so, and, and I feel bad for you, Jazzy. You know what I'm saying? Why and you Because, yeah. man, she attached herself to the big homie and then that, the situation. shit that's going yeah, on. So, this industry is nasty. So. Respectfully. All this shit is nasty. So, Could you imagine also getting your major look to work on Diddy's album? And then he gets accused of what he gets accused of. Like, imagine you've, you're a pure soul. Imagine you're just trying to make it in industry. You're trying to get, you know, your foot in the ladder. You're trying to make a name for yourself, trying to make some noise. You end up getting on one of the most monumental hip hop albums of the recent years. You end up getting on Diddy's best album in recent years, an album that kind of reintroduced him back to the, you know, to the zeitgeist that kind of made people realize, oh shit, he's actually a really good fucking musician. He's actually a really good producer. He's actually a really good artist. And then boom, after the fact, the Cassie lawsuit comes out where she alleges she was raped and she was pimped out, all this sort of stuff and the freak offs. Like that is going to crush you. As much as you're going to have sympathy and empathy for Cassie, you're going to be like selfishly like, fuck, fuck. You're going to be so pissed. You gotta stop that. All of that with shit that, is disgusting. With that being man. said, like, I'm like, damn. And it's the second time Puffton did this shit. Cause, like, when I was a kid, he, when I had Sexy Lady and all them songs, he called me to Daddy's house. He like, man, who producing your records? I'm like, me and my brother Rob Holiday, I signed him. He's doing this shit with me. Next thing I know, he signed Rob Holiday. And it's Fuck like in 2008. Mm -hmm. Put that nigga on jets, turned the nigga against me, had him stop working with me, oh, and all shit. type of shit. So, this is like a reoccurring type of thing. And this sounds like regular occurrence in the music industry like i've always said i think the music industry might be one of the most evil diabolical industries to work in it just seems like everybody is out to get you especially if they look like you they'll do it even more and i've realized one thing as well in the music industry from what i've heard from people is that when you get fucked over in the music industry instead of it making you into a person that doesn't want to fuck up other people it just makes you want to do it to other people you know because somebody else fucked you over you want to do it to somebody else and I get the feeling some people feel as if, I know Joe said this, as if like, 
you if you get into the music industry you have to get fucked over it's almost like a rite of passage so they'd rather they do it because they look like you and they're from the same area place as you as opposed to somebody else which it doesn't make any sense really because getting fucked over is getting fucked over getting scammed is getting scammed doesn't matter if the person's black white asian or whatever if there's someone scamming you it's always gonna hurt especially if they're fucking taking money out of your pocket or taking food off your table to like feed your family and shit it's always gonna be horrible and you're never gonna you know take it well but that is some of the thinking that people have in their head like okay i got fucked over this record producer fucked me over this label fucked me over this agent did this manager did i'm now going to do it to somebody else who's un you know who's who just is is unaware of what's going on it's completely naive it's coming into it green and wide-eyed i'm gonna fuck them over too which i think is diabolical which is why the good people in the industry who do go out of their way to do good business who do go out of their way to rewrite the wrongs who do go out of their way to set an example should be credited and should be kind of lauded because most people in the industry don't do that and then from there it really hurt even more because now he dissected my records and took it and i'm in atlanta and he had his a and r reached out to tink's manager like yeah i think we want tink on this r b project Jesus this and Christ. i'm like wait that what <laughs> so of course i was no, I'm like i'm not even joking nah I, tink I would have been tink would have been fire on that bro. i hate, yeah, I hate what do you think it about I, everything else he's saying though exactly oh, I, I, might have I, been too rob all this I, you know I, <laughs> nah. exactly good if, well done to fucking um what's her name um, for saying like forget the tink thing what about all the other stuff you said about diddy oh let's just forget about that like all the evidence of him being a complete dirtbag and piece of shit let's forget about that because he's got money i hate that way of thinking i really fucking do hate it <laughs> I, I hate it i hate it i hate it i hate it that's on bob that. holiday <laughs> and, and then from there y'all call, call him rob <laughs> yeah when, Bro, uh, I would never speak to that nigga again. Jazzy, Jazzy and Tink album dropped at the same time. Tink's last album and Tink was number one. And then he called me. He like, nigga, I, you in good company. Jazzy number two, Tink number one. You in good company. I'm like, nigga, you in good company. What the fuck you talking about? Exactly. I'm number one. What are you talking about? <laughs> he like, nigga, you don't know the type of money I done spent. Nigga, you ain't going to be in that spot for long. <laughs> and she, you know, I stayed in that spot and she didn't. <laughs> big up hitmaker man big up berg um he's seen some shit i would love to read um hitmaker's autobiography if he ever did an autobiography if you ever wrote one if you ever put one together um but i would love to read it because i think he has some stories he definitely went through the ringer he definitely had his ups and downs he came out of it at the other end and turned himself into a super producer legitimately some of his credits are insane some of the stuff that he's actually um been a been a part of in terms of constructing and whatnot careers he's helped to re revive like the guy is the real deal so i would legitimately love to hear his stories because you know despite him being relatively young he's lived a fucking rich life he's been through shit in the industry and he could definitely give it up because he's not afraid because obviously he has a talent to kind of back it up and shit so i'd love to hear more from him going forward i would really love to hear more from him going forward